Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for joining. And as we just kind of ease into our study tonight, uh, let's start with a prayer and a praise, and then we'll get into the teaching of the word. So uh, let us bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you so much for this precious time. And may this be a, a truly a time where we hear your voice. May it be a timely word to really speak to the depths of our hearts. Father, through this word, may we be able to have understanding of your will. May we have understanding of your heart in these last days. Father, we pray for our families, our children, our spouses, our businesses. We pray that we may be able to rise up and be able to be the firstborn and be able to rise above the nation so that we may be a channel of blessings. And at this time, we want to come before you by faith through praise and thanksgiving. Father, please prepare our hearts so that we may be able to receive your word. Take away all of the, the worries and anxieties and all of the fear and darkness in our hearts so that we may focus on you at this time. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Okay. Uh, draw me close to you. Uh, let's just sing this once and then we'll get into our study. Draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. one else will do Cause nothing else could take your place to hear the warmth of your embrace help me find the way bring me back to you You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. You're all I want. You're all. So actually today's the uh, second day of the period of Lent. So we want to walk with Jesus uh, during these 40 days and let us draw close to him. Okay. Lesson nine. Lesson nine. Already we're nine weeks into uh, the cell group studies. The title is The Start and Interference of the Construction of Zerubbabel's Temple. Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 is our main passage. And please take out your Bibles and also uh, follow on the screen as uh, we read the verse. So Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. And let us read this together. Okay. So Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Let's read this together. Ready, begin. Now, when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the people of the exile were building a temple to the Lord God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the heads of fathers' households and said to them, Let us build with you, for we, like you, seek your God, and we have been sacrificing to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us up here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of fathers, households of Israel, said to them, You have nothing in common with us in building a house to our God, but we ourselves will build 
will together build to the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. This is the word of God. Amen. Okay, so we'll look at the beginning and interference of the work of the temple construction. So uh, as an uh, introduction, uh, this is uh, just kind of a review of what we learned last week. Uh, God's work is accomplished by the unsparing devotion of those who are both seen and unseen. So there are people who work, but some of them are seen and some of them are unseen, visible and un, uh, invisible. And last week, we studied about how Daniel was an unseen but vital individual that contributed to the start of the rebuilding of the temple. And that was through his prayers. And prayers are something that people cannot see always, especially when we go into our hidden closet of prayers. And today we will examine the people who were on the forefront of God's work. So that means these are the people who are actually visible. And also we're going to look at the interference by the adversaries. And so this is the same with us uh, in the end time. And sometimes we have a role that is both seen and sometimes unseen through our uh, prayers. And especially Zerubbabel and Joshua, these two leaders, were the leaders of the first return who led the construction of the temple. Zerubbabel was the governor and Joshua is the uh, high priest. He's uh, the son of Jehozadak. And Zerubbabel is the son of Sheotel, according to the genealogy. And these were the people who were actually on the forefront. They were the visible workers uh, in the co temple construction. So first of all, let's look at the appearance of the beginning of the construction of the temple. So uh, the people started to work on the construction of the temple and uh, they laid its foundation. And when the foundation was laid, number one, most of the people rejoiced when the work had begun. So construction of the temple began in the second month of the second year of arrival in uh, Jerusalem. Ezra chapter 3 verse 8 talks about that, right? So it says, now in the second year, let me change the color, second year of their coming to the house of God. And in the second month. So this is uh, when they started on the work of the temple. Uh, we're going to look at a chart in a moment here. Okay. Uh, so when the people of Israel began to build the temple and laid the foundation of the temple, the sounds of weeping and joy overlapped with each other. So this is very interesting. There's a contrast. Sounds of weeping and sounds of joy, uh, they were mixed together. And most of the people rejoiced when they saw the foundation of the temple being laid. So if we look at the verse, Ezra chapter 3, verses 10 through 13, uh, it says, They sang, praise, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. All the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord. So there was great uh, sounds of praising and giving thanks to God. But on the other hand, uh, let's look at this. Yet many of the priests and Levites and heads of fathers' households, the old men who had seen the first temple wept with a loud voice while many shouted aloud for joy. And so this was so much that they could not distinguish if it was a shout of joy or a sound of weeping from far away. And uh, how loud must have been the sound of weeping? Because these were old men, and uh, it would have been a small percentage, but it was uh, this great big sound of joy plus the sound of weeping. So let's look at this chart as I prepared. 
Now, if you look, the first return uh, happened in the second year of Cyrus, 537, right? And this was, uh, they arrived, all that uh, official uh, account of the arrival was the first day of the seventh month. So Ezra 3, 1 talks about that. When the seventh month came and the sons of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Uh, Ezra 3, 6, from the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. And so uh, this is the time when they made the first return at this point. So 537 BC in the seventh month. And seventh month is the beginning of the year according to the Tishri method, right? So you can see that it's in the beginning of the year according to the Tishri uh, account, um, the standard. And then if you remember, Daniel's three-week prayer was in the first month. So we studied that last week. He had a three-week prayer in the first month. So this uh, at this uh, conjuncture. And so the temple begins in the second month, which is this point here. So Daniel had a great uh, impact. Uh, he played a vital role through his prayers. And so we see that the people had returned and it was about a year and uh, a half uh, in preparation of the building of the temple. So here you can see uh, physically through this chart, uh, the timeline of uh, the events. And this is very important to uh, piece everything together. Okay, so also not only was there sound of joy, but the old men wept. Now, however, some, uh, some of the old men who had seen the splendor of Solomon's temple in the old days wept bitterly. This was like loud weeping. This was because they realized that Solomon's temple was destroyed because of their sins. And although the temple was being built again, its beginnings paled in comparison to its former appearance. So it paled in comparison. It was... Uh, little and it was too insignificant now i want to make a point here because in ezra 3 12 yet many of the priests let me change color priests and levites and heads of father's household so these were actual leaders who would have worked in the temple these are the ones who committed the sins in solomon's temple but Looking at how they returned, these were, you know, at least 70, 70 years old. Because in the time of uh, Solomon's days, we see that the people worked in the temple at starting at 20 years old. And so if they were just fresh, like a rookie, you know, chobo, they were just working in... Uh, the temple in 586 BC when uh, the temple was destroyed, when they would have returned in 536 BC, that was 50 years later, so plus 50 years. And the, at the very least, you know, they would have been 70 years old, those who have directly have worked in the temple. Now, you could have been maybe 10 years old at that time, and you would have been 60 years old when you made a return. But the priests and Levites who were actually working in the temple, let's say you were 30 years old. So you're not a rookie, but you were actually ordained and you were working in the temple. So plus 50, you would have been 80 years old. And uh, I mentioned this in the Sunday uh, Christian Military Academy. So these were people, you know, over 70 years old who saw the Solomon's temple who actually worked in Solomon's temple. This is an amazing fact because we think that most of them probably would have died, but this was the grace of God that they survived and they actually made their way back to their hometown. But uh, they saw and they wept because uh, of this scene. And why is that? Why is that? And it was because of their sins. Uh, second, the adversary's request, and 
more than request, we could say they are demand because it's a strong demand to participate in the construction of the temple. So when the construction of the temple began, the enemies of Judah and Benjamin demanded that they build the temple together. We, we saw that. It says, let us build with you, for we, like you, seek your God. And we have been uh, sacrificing to him since the days of Ahasar Hadan, king of Assyria. So you have to remember in 722 BC is when the uh, northern Israel nation was destroyed. And so if you count all the way up to 536 BC, this is, you know, uh, less, uh, a little less than 200 years. And so they, they were focusing on their tradition. Yeah, we've been here for almost 200 years. But the thing is, they came with a, a mask coming as if they were helping, you know, let us build with you. But the thing is, they said, uh, for we, like you, seek your God. It's th it was not a personal God. They didn't believe in God, the only true, one and only God. And so they came with this mask, pretending to help them. And this is precisely the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we have to watch this. For, we have to discern. They look good on the outside. The words look good, but inside those words, there's evil contention. So sometimes uh, people praise, but inside that praise, there's evil intention. It's, it could be for flattery. You know, it could be to cause them to um, make them prideful and arrogant. There's all sorts of reasons why praise could even be uh, inside could be evil evil intent. And so we have to truly discern what um, people's intents are, and that is with prayer. Now, who are the enemies of Judah and Benjamin? So the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin refer to the people of Samaria, obviously. So it says, we have been sacrificing to him since the days of Esar Hadan, who brought us out here. And so uh, in 722 BC, uh, the Assyrian king, Esar Hadan, forcibly migrated Gentiles to the northern land of I Israel. And later, the people of northern Israel and the Gentiles mixed to form a mixed race called Samaritans. Samaritans. So this was a, a mixture of faith. Second, uh, let's look at the faith of the Samaritans. For the Samaritans, faith in Jehovah and belief in foreign gods were mixed. So in 2 Kings 17.33, they feared the Lord, but also served their own gods, according to the customs of the nations from among whom they had been carried away into exile. So in this way, these people served a mixture of both Jehovah and their own God. So it was a mixed, a mixed faith. And we call this syncretistic uh, beliefs, mixed faith. Third, so the returnees deny the adversary's uh, request. So they flat out request, uh, denied their request and declared that they would build a temple on their own without any help. So we don't need the help. So, you know, for instance, just for instance, this is not a real case, but, you know, we want to uh, build, let's say, a, uh, a sanctuary here in, uh, inside the church. Uh, and the uh, district offers to help. But we know that, you know, when the district offers to help, you know, there's going to be conditions and qualifiers so that they can control that. And for, inst and for instance, uh, if you look at like uh, kindergartens, you know, Oriniji, you know, the government subsidizes uh, many of the uh, kindergartens, but they wanna control the education. 
So it's all about control. So they want to put in, you know, liberal, the, uh, liberal philosophies and liberal teachings. It's all about, uh, you know, not helping, but it is to control uh, the people's thoughts. So here it says uh, in verse three, as we said, you have nothing in common with us building a house to our God. So the returnees had several reasons for rejecting the Samaritans offer. First, because the Samaritans had syncretistic beliefs. So they believed in more than one God and they believed in several gods, mixed gods. And also, you know, the Lord God was in there as well. Second, the Samaritans had political ambition to keep the returnees under their control, as I just said. But most importantly, it was because of God's command. And when Cyrus commanded them to return and build a temple, this was God's command to build a temple with the people of God only. And so this, they uh, were not told to get help from other uh, people who were uh, outside of the uh, people of Israel. So there was no command from God to build a temple with the Samaritans. And so this teaches us that we need to have a faith with no compromise. We need to be uh, honest, have integrity, and um, be able to have no deceit or deceptiveness in our lives of faith. So no compromise. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware who Keith Green is. Keith Green, he's a famous singer, died in a plane crash. But uh, he was a, a, a Christian uh, in the 70s, and he, uh, he had uh, been born again. And he wrote a book called No Compromise. And it's a, it's a pretty inspiring book because, you know, he was... Um, Kind of a hippie but he turned into a christian and but as he uh, reformed he really lived a life of no compromise he really uh you know stuck to his beliefs and no matter what uh the environment was this is a faith that we need to have no compromise sometimes we tend to become gray and not here or there and we we compromise because of the situation part of it is culture uh, but uh, God wants us to be clear in our stance with uh, him. And so uh, I pray that we may be able to have this kind of faith. Amen. So in conclusion, uh, in the book, it says, if you have shed the same tears as the old people we study today, let's share them with each other. I don't know if, you know, you want to share those kind of, you know, sins or, you know, we, we should share, we should only confess to God, but you know, sometimes we have these, these regrets, and as time passes, even though 50 years pass, these people still regret it, and they had the shame, and they had this, uh, this deep uh, repentance and remorse for their sin. And so, you know, rather than going through that hurtful process, we need to not sin before God. You know, we need to just not sin at all. And so, uh, in this time of Lent, uh, let us be able to have repentance and reformation as we draw close to God. And let us truly walk in the footsteps of Jesus, carrying our cross and uh, denying ourselves. You know, let's, let's put down our stubbornness. You know, uh, you know, I'm right and you're wrong, you know, or... Let's put down um, our sins, our repetitive sins. Uh, let's put down and lay down all of our hurts. You know, sometimes we've been wronged and we have uh, hurt in our hearts. We cannot forgive. And that's still, you know, lingering in our hearts. That, that prevents us from receiving the word. But during this time, let us be able to remove all of that, remove all of the mountains, the pride and remove the valleys, and let's make a straight path for the way of the Lord. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to share the prayer requests, and I'm going to take this off sharing. All right. So...
we're going to go into our prayer topics once I get set here. Okay. So let's pray for this nation. Let's pray for the elections and there's not much time. You know, it's on the 9th. So today's already gone. Uh, so um, from now until the 9th, we need to pray for the uh, elections for the new uh, president. Let's also pray for the COVID-19. You know, there's people suffering from that. So uh, let's um, pray for the recovery of, you know, if people are, have been affected. Let's pray that we don't get affected if we have not. Uh, let's pray that COVID gets eradicated and that we may come back to normal worship centered on the church. And also let's pray for Shiloh. Let's pray for all of those uh, babies, you know, Janice, you know, I wish Joey could, uh, you know, join us. And also Zoe, you know, Anna's baby. And, um, uh, and also Jordan, uh, you know, evangelist Dave, I just talked to him and he, you know, his, uh, his son is almost a, a year old and he's already walking. I saw a video of it. It's pretty cute. And so pray for those babies. And let's also pray for Johan, John. You know, it's his uh, one year birthday. Let's pray for those who are recovering, like Roxanne. And let's pray for Benjamin O, uh, uh, Elders uh, Madeline and her daughter Ellie. Let's pray for um, uh, also uh, those who uh, are hurting in our hearts. Uh, I think I'm forgetting a couple more people who are going through surgeries. And, uh, but uh, let's pray for those who are hurting and let's pray for those who are, uh, that have businesses, you know, uh, Chie, she's not here with us today, but she asked to pray for her business, you know, and uh, um, also we, we thank God for our Deacon Brian Pan's safe recovery back here. And uh, let's pray uh, for our workplaces, our families, our children, our spouses. And also, let's pray for the uh, period of Lent. And so you heard about the special uh, morning prayers uh, from the 7th to the 9th. And that'll be next week. And also, please pray for me as I will be lecturing in uh, Mariah. Uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after, March 13th. And we need to pray for Pyongyang Day. And uh, if you've been keeping up with the announcements, the services is going to be on Thursday, uh, March the 10th. Uh, but there's also going to be another event uh, focusing on the family on uh, the 13th, the, the day itself. So let's pray for that and the transmission of faith. Okay, so I'm going to put on the music and let's pray for those uh, topics. Let's say Amen Hallelujah three times and put up our hands. Amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who is existing from eternity to eternity and is even working up to this day, we give you all of the praise and glory and honor to you. Father, we thank you so much for today's word, and you have challenged us to have a faith with no compromise, to live a life of integrity without any deceit in our lives, and we give you thanks and glory to you. Father, especially we pray that we may be able to have repentance and reformation in this time of Lent. Please send a spirit of repentance, a spirit of supplication and prayer so that we may be moved to pray with tears and repentance of our own sins, uh, the sins of our families, the ancestral sins, the sins of our nation. And may we be able to be like Daniel to cry out to you for forgiveness and seek your face so that we may receive mercy and that we may receive compassion upon us. Father, we are especially praying for the nation of Korea and its elections. We pray that you may be able to be sovereign over all of the process of the election so that no darkness may interfere and that the person that is pleasing to you may be elected as the new president. Father, through this new person, may it be like a King Cyrus that is used for your redemptive history. May they be able to fear you and be prayerful. And Father, may they be able to have people around them like Daniel, who will share the word and be able to advise them with wisdom and with a prayerful heart. Father, we pray for this COVID be eradicated so that we may be able to be completely restored in our worship that is centered on the temple. Father, we also pray for Shiloh and our department, for our families, we pray for all the people who are hurting, both physically and, and spiritually. Send forth your healing wings so that we may be freed from our bitterness, that we may be freed from our unforgiveness, that we may be freed from our anger, that we may be freed from the hurts of the past. Help, me be, help us to be freed from uh, financial burdens and help us to be freed from disease. Father, we pray that Shiloh may be able to come closer together as one community, one body, and may we be able to glorify you as we become one. Father, we thank you. We pray for our spouses, our children, the transmission of faith, those who are abroad and studying, those, the newly born babies, may they grow up in wisdom and stature, and may they be able to grow up to be your workers in these end time. Father, we pray for blessings without grief, so that we may be able to dedicate more and more of ourselves to you financially. And may we be able to not have the grief and worries that are attached to it. We thank you in all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name with thanksgiving. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.